Hello Megalithomaniacs, how are you doing? So we're back again at Teotihuacan, which is the primary pyramid site in all of Mexico. Yeah. We're now heading in to the most interesting part of the site, in my opinion, which is the whole temple of Quetzalcoatl. Because not only is it a pyramid, it was actually built over another pyramid. And recently they found tunnels underneath it. And all around the actual pyramid itself, are 365 Quetzalcoatl plume serpent heads and they obviously represent the days of the year but in between them they have Tlaloc in between every single Quetzalcoatl plume serpent head. Each of the Quetzalcoatl heads weighs about four tons so we're looking at megalithic aspects here. There's also lots of megaliths around behind the temple where excavation has been taking place for a couple of years now. We have arrived at the temple of Quetzalcoatl. So here is the later temple of Quetzalcoatl. But just behind here, this is the one with all the uh, reliefs, the kind of protruding 365 uh, statues of the plumed serpent. Now this is a rough hewn pyramid. This has been built over numerous times. And just around the other side of this is the entrance to the tunnel they found here where they found all these strange metal spheres and other artifacts in there but while we're here around just uh, this side you can see some of some of the statues that were actually on the pyramid originally some of these weigh up to four tons these are like they were about two tons each but some are much larger they get much further back and these are very similar to what we find at olmec sites where we have what appears to be kind of long statues slotted into the base of the pyramid, like at Leventa or San Lorenzo or Tres Zapotes. And we have this tradition here. And so we know that the monument at Leventa, which seems to depict Quetzalcoatl, may have originated there and actually spread here. Although there is debate about that now because of places like Tamon Chan and the sites in Morales State that Marco and I have been investigating. If we just keep walking back here, I'm just trying to keep the wind off the microphone, you can see there's more very large pieces of stone. This is part of a Tlaloc statue, you can see that. He was the rain god, the water god. He was also associated with lightning and thunder, and he was supposedly the originator and the leader of the Quinametzin, which is one of the earlier worlds of ancient Mexican tradition. And so the Quinametzin themselves were thought to have actually been the builders of Teotihuacan. Now these go way, way back. There's a whole list of names of different Quinametzin giants. They were kind of uh, very powerful. They were warriors. They were rulers of certain areas before their world was destroyed by a great flood. And Tlaloc, was associated with them. Now whether they were actually the Olmecs and they were referred to as the Quinometzin is a debate that's still going on today and you can see some more of these megalithic blocks just at the base here of one side of the uh, pyramid of the plumed serpent. One of the other interesting aspects here at the temple of Quetzalcoatl and the main pyramid here at perpendicular points, i.e. each corner and each kind of face, they found this very specific number of burials and skeletons. Some had cranial deformation, possibly elongated skulls, with all these different artifacts. But the numbers of them are very significant because they're based on the two calendars. So the number of individuals in each grave were 1, 4, 8, 9, 18 or 20. And uh, this equaled 260 when you know put together. The 260-day Zolkin sacred calendar and the 365-day Harb main calendar, the solar year. Now we must remember both these calendars are reported in Olmec land. They were, if you go to Tres Zapotes, there's a monument there that has a date back going back to 31 BC, which goes back originally the, the actual original. Uh, long count calendar goes back to 3114 BC and they correlate every 52 years they rejoin they reconnect every 52 years and that's where then they'd have these fire ceremonies and rebuild over the top of earlier pyramids so the fact that they've got this memory here 
of these calendars, which is still before the Maya, because the Maya came a little bit later, so they inherited it from the Olmec, possibly via Teotihuacan, which I believe is an Olmec site, into the land of the Maya, who then took it to a whole other level. So we're now behind the temple of Quetzalcoatl. Huge megalithic blocks here. Some weigh probably six, seven tons. Actually one of the Quetzalcoatls there. Another giant Quetzalcoatl here and these other megalithic blocks. Absolutely amazing. Was, you can see kind of a watery aspect or the scales of dragon or the serpent. So I'm continuing to look around the back of the temple of Quetzalcoatl. You can see the plumes here beautifully carved on one of the megalithic blocks. You can see how big these are. This is absolutely massive. And again we have another example here and another one here. So we see that they were joining like these outer stones together which wrap around the big heads pushed in. So combined, these were like probably 10 tons a piece. If you combine that with the actual kind of heads like we see over there, look at this piece, it's absolutely massive. Again, we have another part of it here. So this is seriously megalithic. And it was Marco who said I should get round here. So yeah, you can see the plumed area going around the head. Then the kind of head itself would fit within it. And you can see more examples all the way up the side of the pyramid here. And down here, look. The giant blocks, the megalithic blocks that make up this amazing temple of Quetzalcoatl. Possibly an Olmec construction, hence this style of stonework, which is very, very similar. We're just right next to the edge of the pyramid here, on one side of it. And you can see there's a massive, massive megalithic blocks. This is one of the Tlaloc ones. You just see the face on it there, the, the water god, the rain god, who is a sower of thunder, kind of giant leader of the coin of medicine. And we even have a little tunnel going under the pyramid just there. And then the main pyramid just going up here. So just walking down the side of the pyramid here, which I've never been to before, where these giant blocks are, including this head here. Just a giant megalithic block, probably like several tons. Oh my. God, there's a whole load of megaliths just piled up here. Look at this. This is insane. It's like coming to Tiwanaku. Just like massive megalithic blocks. Just giant ones. Look at these. And they, it's almost like they kept this hidden. And you can see, look, some of the original blocks actually still are kind of attached to the pyramid there. Look at this. These are gigantic. Some of them have got niches and strange carvings on them. Similar to what we find at Tiwanaku. One of the serpent's heads here. Another one here just lying on the ground. Great to see these close up. We have a Tlaloc one here. See some of the original blocks on the pyramid there. And this is one of the ones that protrudes outwards. You can see the size of it. Probably would have been longer than that. This is actually a way into the pyramid here. Look at this. Oh my God. It's actually the interior of Oh my God, there's a tunnel going on. This is one of the tunnels actually going into the pyramid. That is incredible. So look, this is one of the routes down where they found all these metal spheres. So this is absolutely amazing to be able to see this entrance to the pyramid. Can't get in there though. It's fully locked up. But yeah, check that out. Absolutely amazing. So that goes all the way down to the bottom there. You can see it. 
so that would go underneath the pyramid it's where all these burials would be these stone these metal spheres and this was like the entrance to the underworld and it supposedly it was full of water because you get carvings and stucco that has water like waves on it as well so here we are right behind the pyramid of Quetzalcoatl, the original pyramid you can see all these massive blocks that made it made up its construction all beneath it they're absolutely amazing all the way over there you can see some of them still in situ actually on the construction itself the pyramid of the sun in front of the mountain in the distance there gigantic stones just on the side of the pyramid of Quetzalcoatl here also just fallen down into this whole kind of megalithic kind of field here you can see these close up massive megalithic blocks not as many as we saw on the other side that was incredible these two are amazing pieces look at this piece here as well you see many of the heads sticking out from the actual construction itself you see all the water kind of symbolism down at the bottom now So actually inside the pyramid of Quetzalcoatl, just, out, you know, just outside the front entrance of the original construction, would be around the back, now we're at the front. So we're having a quick look, and I'm just walking in front of the main steps here. You can see it would have been an amazing construction originally. And we have more, look at these. Tlaloc, plumed serpent, and you can see the corn represented here and the water or wings above it actually step on the steps of the pyramid of Quetzalcoatl absolutely mind-blowing now on the second level, and look, he's got obsidian. Obsidian is still in the eye there, look at that. It's incredible. Wow. Both eyes in fact, look at that. That is mind blowing. Close up on Tlaloc. So we're just finishing our day here at Teotihuacan, mid-November 2020. Not many people here. We got we had a very good look at the temple and pyramid of Quetzalcoatl all around it, and the megalithic aspect around the back of it. Some close-ups and obsidian eyes of some of the actual plumed serpent statues, which weigh up to four tons. And so there's a lot more going on here than meets the eye. So thanks for watching, Megalithomaniacs. Hope you enjoyed our trip focusing on certain aspects of Teotihuacan. See you next time.